Welcome to the 24 Hours Podcast. His name is Michael Goddard. He's considered the most innovative artist of the modern day. Here's his gallery, and this is his story. T minus four, three, two, one. The following is a 24 Hours Podcast. Now, I understand you're seeing the gallery for the first time. Yes, I am. I'm a, I'm a virgin to this gallery. No more. So, and? And? It's awesome. It's unbelievable. It's, it's beautiful. It reminds me of uh, Canada. Okay. <laughs> May I ask, why Vancouver? <laughs> what, what, what made you think about Vancouver for a gallery? Well, you know, I love Vancouver, and uh, Paige and Kelly, the, the, the owners here, are just uh, really awesome people, and they wanted to open up something. And, um, but, uh, you know, um, nothing really compares to Canada as far as, you know, its beauty. The people are really cool, and, you know. So, and they love martinis. That's a good thing. Now, that's an interesting little uh, point because I understand you're a non-drinker. I am a non-drinker, which is kind of funny. So, so where's your fascination with martinis and, and gambling and stuff like well, that? Well, you know what? Um, well, I actually do have some biases, so okay. gambling is definitely one of them. <laughs> right. We don't want to get into that quite yet. But, um, but no, the, uh, the, the alcohol is a great way to communicate, I think, with people. It's just like the vehicle that I use because, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a drink that calms the nerves on a first date or, so, you know, we, we have, uh, have a glass of wine to celebrate a special occasion. So I just kind of live through it vicariously. I have plenty of other vices, but um, drinking isn't one of them. And people always ask me, they go, did you just come out of the program or yeah, something? Yeah. You know, why don't you drink? I just never really had a taste for alcohol. But um, but they, they kind of tell, they're like a giant diary. So if you, uh, if you see a picture of a courtroom, you know where I was that day. So <laughs> I understand you work the wife's name into uh, most of your work. Um, I do, actually. That's kind of like my get out of jail free card. <laughs> um, what happens is I get in trouble and then I say, honey, don't forget, I just put your name in that painting. And this one right here you can actually see it right here it's in the uh, it's in yellow and uh, this oh, is Ellie course. right there yeah. but yeah so you'll see that in a lot of the paintings and a lot of times too I'll hide other little things in there um, it's kind of the, the fun fun that I have with the painting my family are either clever or a target so um, <laughs> so basically what I did was I'd have uh, hide little things in there and try and make it like a thinking painting people will take the painting home and then a couple weeks later they go oh, wait a minute I didn't know you know what this was about so but uh, but yeah it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun and like an emotional bath do you walk walk to a blank canvas and just see what comes out of you or do you walk there with a specific idea in mind um yeah, kind of kind of both <clears throat> Kind of both. Um, most of the time, like I don't usually draw anything out. First, I just go right to paint. But um, sometimes it'll be an idea. And like I said, it's kind of like a um, <clears throat> kind of like whatever happened that day will be my inspiration. Like if you and I try to make up a joke or something together, it come out pretty lame. But if you just take what happens to you in life and turn it into something, then you know, kind of kind of goes that way. So um, <clears throat> I was watching a hockey game, which I which I really rarely do. But um, now I'm into curling, as you can tell. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, not into curling because it reminds me of housework. The way they use yeah, the broom exactly. thing. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of <laughs> scary but uh, that's kind of where I get the idea um, <clears throat> there's some other ones over here the, well there's a courtroom piece over there and the um, uh, well this one here the martinis the it's crazy. Well, this one here, one of my friends is uh, Vince Neal from Motley Crue, and he broke his leg. So I was doing something to kind of make fun of him because I'd heard that he broke his leg that yeah. day. And, uh, you know, get a little alcohol, and we, you know, might end up chasing the nurse around. So, yeah. And this was also inspired by him because he did a show on uh, VH1 uh, where it's called The Remaking of Vince Neal. Yes. And they peeled his face yeah. off, and my daughter was crying. She's going, oh, my God, is he going to be okay? <laughs> and I go, yeah, he's fine. But... Um, but again, you know, so I thought under the knife would be kind of a cool, uh, cool idea. If you look closely at these, this is one of the subtle things I'm talking about. That um, <clears throat> the the female nurse here, she's um, she's just kind of doing her makeup and stuff while she's at work. She's basically one of those people who just kind of exists. So, but if you look at the tools on the table, they actually spell out phonetically. They spell out exist. Oh, so nice. you know, yeah. that's kind of the uh, the little secret. You know, it's almost like a scratch and sniff painting. So you mentioned Vince Neil of Motley Crue. Yeah. Who are some of your other celebrity clients, or, or uh, who, who yeah. owns Godard oh, Goddard's gosh. work? Let's see. There's a lot. I know that the, uh, the the officers' lounge is all decked out with my stuff. There's lots of uh, lots of artists that, that own it. I guess I wouldn't even be able to name them all. But I can tell you that you know, uh, one of my best friends is uh, Ozzy Osbourne. He did uh, he did the the cover uh, and the forward to my book, and I own his uh, his chopper. Um, <clears throat> there's the guys from Alter Bridge, uh, Jar from Dishwalla, um, but all kinds of things. And you know, in fact, um, about uh, I'd say like six months ago, 50 Cent sent me a picture that says uh, Goddard standpoint. I, so what? I'm not really sure what it means, but you know, um, I kept looking at the bling every day, so I had to get myself a spinner. You know, so yeah. 
That's very so, cool. Yeah. So, but uh, but I, I think a lot of people collect it. I think it's not really. Um, when I first looked at doing these, um, I really thought that my audience would be like maybe between I don't know uh, 25 and 55 years old. But I have the retired doctors. They're like in their 70s. That martini was their drink of the day, and the little kids love it too. Last night I did a show and it was just packed with little kids. They love the animated part of it. You know, the little strawberries with the arms and the legs and the you know the doing the dress up thing. So the kids really love it too. So that really kind of shocked me. You know. But um, I think an artist is basically just a kid who forgets to grow up anyways. Talk about being a kid. Were you a doodler as a kid? <clears throat> oh, yeah. In fact, art was, um, I, I changed schools a lot when I was a kid. I, I probably went to oh, close to 20 schools, I'd say, by the time I graduated high school. Um, it wasn't part of the witness protection program at that time. But um, I was a really shy kid, so that was the way that I made friends. So I'd sit in class, and, and I, you know, I knew I could draw, so I'd draw a little something and then wait for somebody else to see and go, hey, that kid can draw. And the next thing you know, I'd be, hey, can you draw me something? So, um, so it's always kind of been um, that way, but it, I always sucked at sports. So I always said that you know, when God was passing out the sports skills, he uh, <laughs> skipped over me, but he dropped a paintbrush because I was that guy in junior high that was like this going, please don't pick me last, please don't pick me last. <laughs> So this is kind of my uh, my way of uh, doing that. So I do a lot of stuff with the sports celebrities too. Though I had met um, Pete Rose, and um, we did a uh, um, uh, a charity for 65 Brothers. I do a lot of charities, and um, it was kind of funny because they're with all the the Bengals. Um, uh, I don't know if they're football or baseball or what. I'm sorry. But they're football. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> Those guys are big too. But anyway, so and someone said, you know, they go, uh, so are you enjoying? Uh, are you enjoying, you know, being with all these, you know, uh, famous athletes? And I go, yeah, I'm really enjoying because these guys used to kick my. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Are you are you surprised at all by the reaction to your work? Oh, I'm, I'm totally blown away. Especially like you know, um, just. For me, it's like I, it's like being in the center of a tornado. I'm, I'm, my life is focused on the task at hand. It's um, you know, it's it's refereeing the kids, or it's you know the next painting I'm working on. But when then when I step out, um, you know, and to a gallery like you know like this one in Vancouver, I know there's just gonna be floods and floods of people, and I'm always just blown away. And I'm always kind of like a little bit nervous, going, man, you know, I've done 500 shows. It should be a little bit calmer now. But you know, the artworks kind of engulfed me and kind of became something that was that's bigger than I am. And you know, uh, it was just a really a really cool. Thing. Thing. And um, it's fun to have the bling and stuff, but the real reason I paint is because I have a I have a chance to do something um, to kind of wash people's uh, uh, drama away for a little while. Um, we have a, a client that's in uh, Iraq. He's a soldier, and uh, he tags the tanks after they're done blowing them up with uh, a little stickman olive, and it says Goddard on there. And I just I, that's the whole the reason for doing it. So I really um, enjoy that. And now with um, with the, I have a charity auction at every art show too. So that's a big reason why I do all this, and I think that's the reason I was given this, um, you know, blessing, you know, about being Goddard. <laughs> was, was there a point in your life where you kind of went, I've made it? What, 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 when did you realize that this was legit and, and you were going to be something? You know what? I, I don't really know because, you know, about five years ago, I was still living in my freaking car. Okay. So, I mean, things were tough and, um, and I've always been tough, but um, I've just always kind of been, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I do, I, just, I want, to, want to do more. And it's just now I kind of get to paint whatever I want, whereas before when I walked into the gallery, I'd say, okay, what do you need? You know, what, what can I sell to keep, uh, keep you know, my belly full or keep a roof over my head? And um, now, it's, um, now it's much different. So now I get to paint whatever I want and try to afford my own work. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one final question. I yeah. like talking to artists or, or musicians about yeah. what their best work is, and they usually say it's the one I'm working on. Do artists feel the same way? What's your best piece of art? Is it something that you have yet to create? Um, I, I would say yes. Um, uh, my favorite painting right now is um, one that I had just finished for Ozzy, actually. It was uh, something I'd done for, for OzFest with him in there. And it was just, uh, you know, all the ingredients, I guess, is kind of like a cook or the perfect swing when you're, when you're a batter or, you know, or a football player if you're in the fruit bowl or the salad bowl or whatever. Um, but it's just like, you know, when everything comes together just perfectly. And on that painting, it was really um, something else. But each one of them is kind of like, you know, the, it's just uh, one step leads to another step, and it's all about the journey anyways. I, I talked to Ringo Starr on the phone. And um, it was just kind of by accident. I had a, a friend there who said, hey, listen, one of your, one of your fans is on the phone. And so I said, uh, uh, I said, hello. And he says, hi, this is Ringo. And I go, Ringo Starr? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes, and he said, you know, one of my favorite paintings is The Last Martini, which is kind of a spoof off of, uh, off of Leonardo da Vinci's um, um, last, uh, last Supper. And um, he said, he goes, I heard you're going to, I say, how would he say it? He said, I heard you're going to be as big as we were, you know, <laughs> something like that. I'm like, and this is not in 50 millenniums will I ever even touch remotely what the Beatles were. But, you know, again, it's all about the journey. It's all about, you know, getting from A to B and looking back and saying, wow, what a roller coaster ride, you know, so. 
Yeah. You've heard this a million times, but the art is tremendous. And, and congrats oh, on, the, on the good work, and Thank thanks for talking much. with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. See ya. 24hours.ca